It's the SEC Big 12 Challenge presented to you by Sonic. It's part of Jimmy V Week for Cancer Research on ESPN as we continue our commitment to the V Foundation and Jim Valvano's stream to defeat cancer. Tonight, LSU taking on number 16, West Virginia in Morgantown. It's a good start for the Big 12. They win on a last second layup. Texas Tech defeating Auburn in a low scoring game, but we have a long way to go. You gotta get six to wrap this thing up. Along with the former South Carolina and Western Kentucky head coach, Darren Horn, I'm Dave Lamont. Thank you very much for joining us. All right, you're on the road. You're taking out an undefeated ranked team. So LSU has a lot of challenges. What's the biggest one? Well, the biggest challenge for them tonight, Dave, is handling West Virginia's pressure. And they do it to teams in two ways. One, with their full court defensive pressure where they lead the country in steals and they get 23 points a game off those turnovers. But secondly, on the offensive glass, they put a lot of pressure on defenses by getting to the glass. This is the best offensive rebounding team in college basketball. Also, speaking of rebounding, the big men tonight, we're not just getting one or two good ones. We have four good big men tonight. Well, two for each team. And what I like about them, David, they don't just score the basketball. They rebound it at a high rate as well. You see Jordan Mickey and Jarrell Martin for LSU and Jonathan Holton and Devin Williams with the goggles for West Virginia. All right, let's take a look at the head coach. LSU is Johnny Jones. It is third season and 39 wins in his first two. That is the most in school history. And his lineup, we talked a bit about the big men, but this is going to be a guards game tonight, Darren. Well, there's no question about that. And Josh Gray is the key for LSU. The Juco All-American transfer coming off his best game as a Tiger with 25 against UMass. Meantime, Bob Huggins, one of the winningest coaches in the history of college basketball, third most active, 747 career wins, 14th all time. We take a look at his starting five, and they've announced a change at the last second. Number 11 will be into the game, and that's Nathan Adrian replacing Jay Sean Page in the starting five. But all the talk about that great guard there at the top. Well, Jawan State, and every time Hugs has a great team, he's got a great point guard. This guy's the preseason player of the year in the Big 12 and the reigning Puerto Rico tip-off MVP. There you see Adrian getting the look tonight. As they may be countering big with big because Page at 6'3", Adrian 6'9". We're underway, LSU in their road purple, and they will get it with Gray. Really important for LSU to play inside out first, attack the paint. They're a much better basketball team when they go in the interior and don't settle for jump shots. Mickey, way out from the basket. Get ahead pass, nicely done to Gray. Little contact there, and LSU goes inside right away with John Odo out of Lagos, Nigeria. Good, good first possession for LSU. They handled the overplay, got the dribble penetration and the drop off of the basket. We've got real subplots here. West Virginia, the top team in forcing turnovers, almost had one go against them. Williams, good looking pass, and a great look underneath. And LSU will escape with a rebound. Holton may not get a better look the rest of the night. Mickey draws contact, a whistle, offensive foul. Joe DeRosa, one of our three officials tonight, joined by Kip Kissinger and Roger Ayer as a veteran at threesome. Jordan Mickey out in transition, trying to get the early finish. Goes aggressively to the basket. Williams slides over. It's a bang-bang play. Really could have gone either way on that one, Dave. Tough first foul on Jordan Mickey, the stud sophomore from LSU. That's Staten on the drive. Almost lost it. Staten and Gray, a battle to watch all night. Five in the purple and yellow and three in the white. On the shot back. Here's Staten. Gets it back. Corner two. That's a two-pointer. And the goggles certainly helping out Devin Williams. Devin Williams not just effective around the basket. He can make that spot-up jump shot to about 16 feet. Nice feed by Juwan Staten on that one. Drive again. Rejection but a foul. It's a blocking foul. Going to go against Williams. So while Martin's shot was blocked, underneath him was the contact. Uh, on West One of the things five. that West Virginia's pressure does is speed up opposing teams. You see Martin on his way to the basket there. Again, another bang-bang play. Could have gone either way. Martin attacking aggressively against that pressure. percent foul shooter, which is very good for anyone, but particularly 6'10", 235. 
see his improvement from year to year. One out of two. Jawan State on the Wendy's Wooden Watch from West Virginia. George Mickey on the Wendy's Wooden Watch from LSU. He's defending the ball, or was. 25 in the purple. Again, they work it inside. And it's knocked out of bounds by LSU with 18 to shoot. West Virginia making a concerted effort to get the ball inside early to Devin Williams and Jonathan Holton. They do it again. That's Williams. You can see the goggles. And he draws contact with the foul. I think that's going to be on Jordan Mickey, Jordan Mickey and it is. And that's two. Like that. Not even played two full minutes yet. And a substitution, Tim Quarterman, a sophomore from Savannah, Georgia, is going to have to come in. And again, this is a byproduct of West Virginia's pressure, Dave. Jordan Mickey picked up that first foul in transition, playing a little fast, getting the basketball a little further out on the floor than he's used to, picked up the charge. Now he gets a regular foul, like he's going to pick up, banging around the basket, but he's on the bench with two. It's all because of West Virginia's pressure. Williams missed the first free throw. 67% foul shooter, hits one out of two. Tied up. Now here's some of the pressure from West Virginia. LSU worked on this quite a bit in their walkthrough today. Get a look at Pete Hornsby, who had it. Now over to Gray. This is Quarterman. Now you've lost a couple of inches in height and about 50 pounds almost in weight. Long shot, no good. Rebound going to go to West Virginia. Back the other way. And that's what LSU does not need is Jarrell Martin shooting threes, especially with Jordan Mickey out. He's got to get in the paint. And one of West Virginia's strengths this year so far, offensive rebounds. They lead the nation, and they get a tap back there to go in front. Martin likes to shoot him long, too. He just doesn't have a good record. One of 17 coming into the game. Well, now he's one of 18. He shoots over 50% when he takes twos. That's what he needs to be doing, <laughs> getting on the line. offensive Martin. glass and banging in the paint. Right on cue. Are you oh, kidding? We're tied up at five. Well, we talked about the importance of good bigs in this game, and one of the things good bigs do for you is make it tough on the offensive glass. The tip in for West Virginia, and then Jarrell Martin where he needs to be to start the game. Doesn't mean he can't step out and take some shots, but get your game going the around the basket, young man. Elijah Bacon will come in because Devin Williams has two fouls. How about that? Two of the people we highlighted at the beginning of the show are sitting on the bench for a little while. And one of the biggest differences between these two teams, West Virginia's going to go 10 deep in their rotation, playing nobody 30 minutes a game. LSU only plays six guys, really, and four of those guys play over 30 minutes a game. Sean Page, number zero, has come in also for Bob Huggins. There's Macon with it. That's a three ball, and that was ugly. Quarterman gets the rebound. Ahead to Gray, and LSU wants to run, and Gray dribbled it off. Whose foot? His foot. West Virginia ball. Second turnover. Josh Gray, an outstanding guard in transition, but Jawan Staten, a good defensive guard as well. They just missed dribble off his foot. This is a great matchup out front with these two point guards. Ray wanted to push off that time and didn't get the call from Roger Ayers. It's Mills for three. There you go. Dexter Mills Jr., the freshman from Baltimore, a 41% three-point shooter. And LSU, really, and they lost it. Stat. Oh, rejected by Quarterman. Still loose, though. Page rejected again by LSU. Blocked that time by Odo. However, it remains for the Mountaineers. These guys are flying around out here, Dave. A lot, of, a lot of athletes being aggressive to the ball. The block shots were necessary because of the turnover. Well, and the turnover resulted because they tried to force the inbounds pass. The guy that's open against this West Virginia pressure is the big. West Virginia's big is not coming up to match. That was a... Uh... Almost careless pass, but Miles will control it and gets the ball in the hands of the senior from Dayton, Ohio, Juwan State. They go underneath to get Bacon against Odo. And lost it. LSU ball. Bacon got in a hurry in the post. When you catch in the post, the first thing you got to do is chin the ball, and then you got to check the defense. Bacon rushed it and turned it over. Watkins into the game for West Virginia, number 20. 
sophomore from Decatur, Georgia. Already five West Virginia points off of turnovers. Wordeman needs some help quickly and gets it from Martin, but look how far Martin is from the basket. It didn't take him long to get to there. There's that unusual form, but look out because the LSU staff has been waiting for Keith Hornsby to get going. If you're Johnny Jones, that's really good news. They have been waiting for him to knock down some shots. A capable three-point shooter has not been able to get on track. Let's see if that gets him going. Hornsby is just a little under 30% coming in as one of the funkier shots you'll see in the college game. Then off the screen, Watkins will set him another one. Got eight to shoot, Page will fire. Here's an assist for Steph and a three ball for the 45% three-point shooter. It's easy to be a good shooter if you've got a stroke and Jawan Staten's on your team. And it's turned over and turned right back. Gray has the numbers, good looking pal, rejected. Oh no, shot is blocked. LSU comes away with it, Hornsby back iron, no good. Another rebound and a put back that time. Determined play underneath by Jarrell Martin. Outstanding effort by West Virginia, but they can't relax once they get the block. They got to come up with the ball. This LSU team's playing hard too. Blink and stuff happens in this game. Turnovers unexpectedly. Staten on the cut wisely decides I'm not going to go against the trees there. Now he's one on one against Gray. Quarterman with a rebound. Ahead to Martin. He'll take it and lose it. Trying to play point forward, is that in his wheelhouse? Well, it's not in his wheelhouse, and the bigger concern if I'm Johnny Jones is the pace of this game. I'm playing four guys, 30 minutes or more a game. We got Jordan Mickey over on the bench. Pace of the game, this game favors West Virginia right now. Mickey with two fouls. We haven't even had our first time out yet. Rebound LSU, Martin, and he gets it out of there quickly. Quarterman's had an impact, though. While Mickey is on the bench, he'll pull up. That's a two ball. Odo tapped it, but it looked to be controlled by the Mountaineers. Both these teams are looking tired right now because we have not had the 16-minute media timeout. We're coming up to the under 12, never mind the under 16 time. Staten's going to slow him down like a senior point guard should, get his team set, try to get the ball inside. Shoot just like that. that left lane couldn't resist lost it knocked out of bounds we will step aside finally there's the timeout Hornsby with the three for LSU but we've got a hectic pace the kick out by State a three for West Virginia and it doesn't stop there Martin's on the glass keeping LSU close is brought to you by Sonics 399 foot long with tots the great Jerry West has a statue here, understandably. The last time these teams met, you got to go back to 2005, the Tigers and Mountaineers in November, and that day, West Virginia retired the 44 of Jerry West. However, for the Mountaineers, it's Mr. Clutch for LSU, Daryl Mitchell. Look at this. Sends the game into overtime, and then with six seconds left in the overtime, he does it again. West Virginia was ranked 13th that night. Mitchell had 45 minutes of game time, had 26 points. Big Baby Davis had 23. West, now, let me tell you something. Jerry West is the greatest player in West Virginia history. Absolutely. In 100 years, he'll still be the greatest player in West Virginia history, which nope, is not no a question. knock on you know upcoming players or the guys that are here. It's just that's how great Jerry West was. He is the logo for the NBA. You're pretty good when that's the case. Yeah, that kind of says something. Also did well as an executive, to say the least, and we're going to have a ball out of bounds. Another turnover by LSU. That's six turnovers already. There you see. And don't forget, he was also on a U.S. Olympic team. Many think that was the first real dream team, the 1960 Olympic team, that won the gold medal in Rome. And Oscar Robertson on that team. But here's your backcourt, Oscar Robertson and Jerry West. Pretty strong there. I don't know if you're ever going to do any better than that. Bounce passes. Stolen away by Josh Gray. Ahead, Hornsby. 
basketball. So LSU turns it around on West Virginia and plays Mountaineer basketball. LSU getting some easy baskets off their defense, turning turnovers into points. Macon left alone there. He will not be shooting from there. That's Jay Sean Page from Jonestown, New York. End of the game now, Javon Carter for the Mountaineers. Number two, there's a tough shot contested by Macon. And no good. Rebound LSU, Porterman. He has played very well with Mickey on the bench in the foul trouble. Lost it out of bounds. Well, told you we were getting close to the under 12 timeout. We weren't kidding. We'll step aside. We've already had five ties in this game. Towards 100% of direct donations and net proceeds of events to fund cancer research. Log on to jimmyv.org or call 1-800-4-JIMMY-V to donate. Darren Horn, Dave Lamont in Morgantown for the SEC Big 12 Challenge. Big 12 won last night. We've got a lot of games to look forward to tonight, several, and all weekend. Great week of basketball in the family of networks. And how about LSU without Jordan Mickey in the game? Good set coming out of the timeout, getting in the paint. Quarterman making himself available on the perimeter. Impressed with Josh Gray's job of handling this West Virginia pressure so far. So Gary Brown is into the game for Juwan State as West Virginia fires and misses, and the rebound goes to LSU, and that's Jalen Patterson. And a hit ahead pass to Quarterman, who kind of cheated and broke out, and he'll get the end one opportunity. And LSU up by the largest amount they've been up so far, five. West Virginia follow Right now, LSU hurting. West Virginia in transition. They're getting it, and they're going on the offensive glass. Portman on the leak out, the throw-ahead pass, and the chance for the and one. West Virginia's got to start making sure they get back and getting the basketball stop in their transition defense. And Jamon State, number three, very quickly back into the game for Bob Huggins, a three-point play. I tell you what, Tim Porterman coming off the bench for Jordan Mickey has been fantastic for LSU. It's been a nice little boost. They've got to continue to play through. Terrell Martin on the inside, let Josh Gray create some offense off the bounce. So far, so good, up six with Mickey out. Yep, and it's six coming from Quarterman. It's an eight nothing LSU run. Adrian back into the game. Staten calling for the screen. Adrian will fire three ball. Ah, that almost hit the top of the Coliseum. Quickly, Gray into the front court. Hit a head pass, that's a counter three and it's perfect. Jalen Patterson, the 30% shooter. Patterson. One of the things you have to make sure that you do against pressure is make the perimeter shots that you're going to get. You're going to get some open looks. you got to knock them down. LSU doing that so far. And LSU's bench applauding that. Josh Gray in transition. Good job of spacing down towards the corner by Jalen Patterson. He gets his feet set, and he knocks it down. See LSU how they've distributed this year. They're third in the nation in two-point field goal percentage. Out of, but however, the longer the shot goes, the less their chances. Well, they haven't been very effective from beyond the arc, and a big reason for that is they haven't taken quality threes over the course of the season so far, but they're taking really good ones tonight, and they're knocking it down three for four. It's the old line from uh, Lucy to Charlie Brown and Charlie Brown to Lucy, I can never remember which. Tell your statistics to shut up. Tomorrow night, the number one team in college basketball headlines the SEC Big 12 Challenge. John Calipari's Kentucky team is really good. But number six is Texas freshman big man Miles Turner. Could be a matchup nightmare. The SEC Big 12 Challenge tomorrow night at 7 Eastern on ESPN. Part of Journey of the Tourney presented by Sonic. Billy D. Williams in the game now for West Virginia. His first action of the year. And hold on here. We, uh, which call are we going to have? It's going to go against LSU. And shake it up a little bit on the play is Jonathan Holman. Albert Robinson trying to operate on the block on that play. The freshman 7'1", 270 pounds, loses the ball. And when he comes back up and tries to swing through, cracks Jonathan Holton pretty nice across the face. 
Let me correct. That was Watkins, not Williams, into the game. No question there's contact with the elbow on that one. Now the officials will go to the monitor to determine the severity of the foul. Holton at 270 day and has dropped about 35 pounds in talking to the LSU staff since he stepped foot in Baton Rouge. This is a young man that has a big body that they're looking for good things in the future for. They could be looking at a flagrant one or flagrant two fouls to take one more look. I don't think that's a flagrant two in any way, shape, or form because that's not deliberate contact. Definitely not intentional, but there's that's no blood. question there was contact. <laughs> There's, and there's evidence of it on yes. the floor. The CSI team here at ESPN has come up with the evidence of a foul in case you need any further. And they're going to have to bring out the spray to sanitize that area. So in hockey, when you draw blood, you're in trouble. We'll see what happens in basketball. Well, one of the reasons that happened is Jordan Mickey's on the bench with two fouls, or otherwise right. they're throwing that basketball inside to their all-SEC performer. Yeah, Jordan Mickey got in fast foul trouble, and so did Devin Williams for West Virginia. Joe DeRosa is explaining the call to both Robinson and to Johnny Jones. We're waiting, and Roger Ayers is going to talk to Darren here just for a second and get the official explanation. And what do you say, Darren? It is indeed a flagrant one foul. They're going two shots, West Virginia. West Virginia will get the basketball down on the baseline. You see the explanation there from the rule book. And I think that's the correct call. I think a flagrant two means that he tried to hit him in the face with an elbow, which we know he didn't do. I would like to think we know he didn't do it. So it's the correct call. So it'll be two and the ball. And it belonged to West Virginia. It looks like it'll be Juwan Staten who will take the free throws. And that was just a simple case of a young big not being Juwan able to gather himself and, and get through properly, shots. definitely inadvertently. But it sends Jawan Staten to the line for some free throws. Now that Robinson is out, LSU has a very small lineup on the floor with Jarrell Martin basically at the five. Well, that may keep him from playing outside where he likes to go. I think you've got to use him underneath now offensively. Which will be a good thing for LSU. 12 feet and in. This young man's a matchup problem no matter who's guarding him. He's that good. So Fordham stays in for LSU. So you're right. He's the next biggest player at 6'6 and a thin 6'6. But he helps out on defense. Kicked open three ball way off the mark. Not going to bounce, but it'll belong to LSU. That was an air ball that time fired up by Miles. Really good help rotation by LSU, stopping the drive by Staten on the refusal of the ball screen. LSU's been very active on the defensive end. Yeah, we expected West Virginia, and there's a steal by State. Drew a little contact with Quarterman, drew a lot of contact that time as he got leveled by Bridgewater. You cannot dribble the ball loose or lazy against this West Virginia pressure. Bridgewater, no idea that somebody's coming up from behind. You have to assume that when you're playing a pressure team. Staten took it from him and turned the other way with it. And you see, we talk about West Virginia. They have now over 100 steals on the year, Darren. And I think one of the keys when you look at that is look how many guys are stealing the basketball. Jonathan Holton, who's outstanding at the front of their press, leads their team. He's second in the Big 12 in steals. 102. And counting. And it kept coming into the game. They had forced 162 turnovers. And that's up to close to 170 now, just off the top of my head. And they were coming in getting 26.3 points a game off of turnovers, which is almost like starting with a 26-point edge in the game. Second free throw rebounded by LSU and Patterson. LSU 8 of 13 from the floor. Martin, that's a three ball. Quarterman continues to be brilliant off the bench for the Bengals. And not only was it a good look that he made, it's probably a smart shot because with Josh Gray out, George Mickey on the bench, you try to make too many passes against this pressure, they may turn it over. You get a quick one, and they knock it down. State tough floater. It's going to be tipped out of bounds off Adrian and belong to LSU. This is the biggest lead LSU has had so far. Anybody has had so far. Six points. And the 
to get it in with a little less pressure. But that's all relative when you're dealing with West Virginia. And Quarterman draws a foul and on Daxter Miles Jr. Uh, Tim Quarterman has been terrific so far, Dave. What a nice piece for Johnny Jones coming off the bench, knocking down some shots, taking over point guard duties with Josh Gray on the bench. This young man's been terrific so far. Sixth team foul, so the seventh will put LSU into the one and one. Tech yeah, Quarterman has done it all right now for LSU. There he goes again. Missed that one, though. And the rebound to the Mountaineers. Almost a turnover. Adrian passed up a double team to get rid of it. And that will be a foul on Bridgewater again. Tariq Phillip aggressively attacking again without that size there. I imagine that they've got to start to attack the best. Well, they definitely have got to play inside, look to get the ball in to the interior guys and take advantage of LSU being small right now. Five fouls against the Bayou Bengals. Seems like a lot of West Virginia points have come lately from the foul line. So Bridgewater comes out of the game. John Odo comes back in over 31. Now you've got more of a shot blocking presence for LSU. And there is that West Virginia pressure that has caused so much problem for so many teams in the early going. Quarterman handled it very well though, ahead to Hornsby. Patterson. Almost a walk. Hornsby contested. Stripped away by Miles, who leaks out, but a lazy pass. Quarterman lost in control of it, and it'll belong to LSU off of Miles. Really good call by Roger Ayers, one of the better officials in college basketball. How about Tim Quarterman flying around? He's everywhere. The turnover that time, though, Dave, created because Hornsby tried to drop the basketball right back where it came from. you got to get the basketball reversed off the dribble of the pass. An awful pass. And it Phillip got hit by Quarterman. He almost got the big dunk and then laid it up and Quarterman knocked him down. LSU foul call number 55, Tim Quarterman, his first. That's Quarterman's first foul. LSU team foul number six. And now both teams with six fouls. Of course, we're going to the line again. That's twice we've seen the basketball knocked from behind for turnovers that have led to something positive on the offensive end for West Virginia. LSU's got to be aware of the defense. You're never past this defense and safe. They're always going to come hunt the basketball from behind. Seven of nine from the line now, the Mountaineers. Their last basket was at the 10-51 mark by Adrian. However, they've stayed in the game with foul shots. With foul shots and in part off of turnovers. Getting yep. fouled after creating turnovers. It's those easy baskets we talked about at the start of the game, Dave. So Phillip Pitts, too, 80% free throw shooting for the Mountaineers, and here comes the pressure again. And Gray dribbled it off his foot. Another steal. Eurostep, traveling. Well, the Eurostep was an extra step. A West Virginia turnover, but right now for LSU, with Mickey out, Quarterman is keeping a minute, knocking down some threes. Has LSU on top. Presented by Sonic. We're in Morgantown. LSU leading number 16, West Virginia. LSU got some bad juju early on when Jordan Mickey went to the bench with fouls, but Tim Quarterman has stepped up. And he's doing it by making shots from the perimeter, getting to the open spot, stepping in and knocking them down. Got one in transition as well. And it's important, Dave, when you're LSU and you're on the road, you want to be a good team. This is a program looking to take that step to get back into the NCAA tournament. you got to find a way to play well and win games when your best aren't at their best right now. They're without their very best. Jordan Mickey on the bench. Corderman has stepped up, and they're ahead. Well, great. Flying in the air. Takes a hard fall. Ball knocked out of bounds of the long to LSU. Josh Gray also kind of quiet offensively has not taken a shot has four assists and three turnovers, but no shot attempts yet. And he averages almost 13 points a game. Hornsby is open, but there's gonna be a two-shot foul instead. 
West Virginia foul. And Martin will be going to the line. Dexter Miles Jr. That foul will be on Miles. You see turnovers and points off of West Virginia. This is what they do. 26.3 points per game off turnovers coming into tonight's game. And the first free throw hit by Martin. When this game started out, they had tremendous flow and pace to it. We almost played all the way through the second media timeout. And since then, a lot of turnovers, a lot of fouls, a lot of free throws. Very choppy game. Three Mountaineers have two fouls. Martin will make them both. LSU up by four. Javon Carter, the freshman from Maywood, Illinois, number two, has checked in. He'll be Staten's backcourt partner. Jonathan Holton also out there for the Mountaineers. Elijah Macon, who's in for Devin Williams, has got foul issues. Look for West Virginia to get Jonathan Holton a touch. There it is. Ooh, I'm not sure that's the one they want, but it's an easy putback for Phillip. Tariq Phillip, Tariq sophomore Phillip. from Brooklyn, will hit that one. And again, the offensive rebounds, another big West Virginia key to their early success. Smart play by Tim Porter, and they had the pressure beat, but they didn't have numbers to score. He backed it out. He got away with a jump pass that was nearly a travel. Some nifty dribbling by Gray. There's Porterman. He has hit these. Missed that time. Oh, my! Yes, indeed! Terrell Martin. Playing inside. The tip dunk, a result of Josh Gray's penetration. Got the West Virginia team in rotation. Nobody put a body on Jarrell Martin, and he just made a highlight. Macon working very hard and threw it away. Great defense by Martin. And now Porterman with a hit ahead, and he'll lay it in. And suddenly LSU is beating Bob Huggins at his own game. LSU getting it done with their half-court defense, forcing turnovers in the half-court. It's leading to some good things on the offensive end. One of them is Jarrell Bart. You better put a body on this guy or he'll make you pay. Number three, TCU looks to grab a share of the Big 12 championship and keep pace in the playoff race when they host Iowa State on ABC Saturday afternoon football at noon Eastern. You can also catch it on the Watch ESPN app. Do you believe that Sunday it's going to be the decision day for college football's playoff? Hard to believe. Sunday. I, I, it stunned me when I read that. I went, oh, that's right, because the end of the regular season is this week. And hold on, while we were discussing that, we had an overturn on the call by Kip Kissinger, and the ball is going to go to LSU. I think Kip just pointed the wrong way. Right call, wrong point. <laughs> well, he hit the out-of-bounds part right all the way. Hornsby faked the three. That's a tough jump pass into Odo. He was not prepared for that. And not only is it tough, it's ill-advised. You should never make jump passes, especially against a team that pressures like West Virginia. I got to think that Odo was expecting Hornsby to shoot. Rattles in the two. Well, one of the knocks on State is he's not a good perimeter shooter from beyond the arc. But 15 to 17 feet, especially off the bounce, he's near automatic. Borderman having a hard time there. Could never get control of that ball around his ankle. Another turnover forced by the West Virginia pressure. And there you see Jordan Mickey went out earlier in the game at 18.02 with two fouls. The all SEC performer. On the bench, and his team still up four. Would several guys up. step up? Would any consideration of putting him back in the game, or do you just wait till the half starts, the next half starts? I would play him for two reasons. One, I don't want him sitting that long. And two, he's going to have to play with fouls at some point. He's got to learn to do that. But Johnny Jones is thinking, hey, I'm up four points. I'm on the road. I'm not going to put him back if I don't have to. And Quarterman has been magnificent in his stead. Oh, my, what a pretty step that time by Gray, but he missed the shot. Odo gets the rebound. He got fouled. Adrian had his hands on the ball and could not maintain control of it, so Odo, the senior from Nigeria, will go to the line. Josh Gray outstanding in transition. You don't average 34 Odo. points a game in junior college without having a little shake in your game. He was the nation's leading junior college scorer a year ago, and Odo only taken four free throws prior to that. Makes it look good. Holton. Adrian will come out of the game. Jonathan Holton out of Coral Gables High in Miami. Actually, Coral Gables, just outside of Miami. Comes back in. Odo. Hands them both. 
In the last five minutes of this half, West Virginia's got to look to pound the basketball inside. They did that early inside to Holton and Williams. Have not done it much since. The deeper of the two teams seems to be West Virginia on paper. They have four players with two fouls each. State back iron on that two. Rebound Quarterman. Almost had it stolen. Well, they swipe at everything, this West Virginia team. Hornsby. Good kick out pass. There's Martin for three. Not going to happen. He's one for 19 from three on the year. Well, maybe after he gets one for 20, he'll realize I need to scoot in or drive the basketball. This young man's a matchup nightmare, 15 feet and in. Still keeps shooting the three-pointer without much luck. Yeah, he's keeping Johnny Jones awake at night with those. Talk about nightmares. Carter looking for Staten, and he had Staten Gray. Excellent matchup. One of the best point guard matchups you'll find this week easily. Tough shot. Contested by Quarterman. And the rebound goes to Gray. And LSU on the run again. Gray off the glass. Block. Little piece of that. Set back by Holton. Beautiful pass to Brown. Here's a Euro. And an easy lay in that time for Watkins. LSU has to be careful not to let West Virginia get one of those 8-2, 12-4 runs here at the end of the half. Oh, the shot was missed and close range by Martin. It belongs to West Virginia. Brandon Watkins getting it done on both ends for the Mountaineers right now. First with the rejection on the Josh Gray drive, and then reward the big fellow when he runs the floor, Dave. They do it in Watkins response. And that is a very, very difficult position to still be ahead by. They've had seven assists, but 13 turnovers. And a big reason is they're winning the battle on the offensive glass. West Virginia with only four offensive rebounds and only four second chance points. And now the lead is down to one. Page. Page, excellent three point shooter. Look out here, Martin in trouble and he's fouled by Adrian who was ambitiously going for the ball and ended up getting a hand instead. Josh Gray is lucky that Adrian fouled on that one. Can't throw lateral cross court passes against this kind of pressure unless you got saved by that foul. That's three on Adrian. Bob Huggins, the expression says it all right there. Both these teams trying to get back to the NCAA tournament. Bob Huggins has been there 20 times in his career, six in the NIT. We were looking at Hugs record earlier today, just over a 33-year period. Really incredible. Only two losing seasons. Only five times has he not won 20 games. <laughs> Last time he had his hometown Mountaineers, he is from Morgantown in the NCAA tournament it was the 2012 tournament. And they're off to a, their best start since 09 and 10 when they started 11 and 0. This team here, Dave, reminds you a little more of the old Cincinnati Bearcat teams mm -hmm. that he had that were so good. They're pressing, they're very good on the backboard. They've got a great point guard. Off the window, State with a beautiful shot. Now he guards defensively. Gray. Pick it up in that corner. Yeah. Hornsby, though, flashed open. Tough shot, missed it. And the Mountaineers could take the lead on this possession. Beautiful pass by Staten to Holton. He had to give it back up. He kicks it back out. Watkins keeps it alive, but Martin gets the rebound. Knocked out of his hands. And is that going to be a foul on Page or just knocked out of bounds? It'll be just an out of bounds. LSU, Martin's got 12. Fordham has got 11. The rest of the Tigers have a dozen. Gray escaping. I don't know how. He has numbers. Beautiful feed. Hornsby. Well, when That's you break a press, Hornsby. sometimes you get gold at the end of that. Well, you've got to attack pressure to score. If you can get an easy one like that, you have to do it. If not, pull it out. Run some offense. Three ball. A little early in the clock. Hornsby back taps it to Martin. Ahead to Gray, and it was stolen. And then he fouled. Frustration foul by Martin. Well, you've got to, Darren, you've got to concentrate on every single pass against this defense. Well, that turnover was just sloppy ball handling, but it was because 
the fear of the pressure. Martin playing a little bit fast. Led to the fumble pass and the turnover by Virginia. Gary Brown out of San Juan, Puerto Rico. Cool story, Gary Brown. A move going to Puerto Rico up this year so he could get on a trip back home to San Juan. Bacon checks into the mound here. You were saying about Brown. Don't don't leave me hanging. Well, he, he got to play in front of his family from Puerto Rico. They all got to be at the games, enjoy a championship yep. by West Virginia in the Puerto Rico tip-off. Knocked off the defending national champions to win it after almost losing to Boston College. Boston College had the run of that game for quite a while, so West Virginia took over. Gray, tough kickout pass, worked around Martin. Patterson on the dribble now, being guarded by Brown. Odo with a crunching screen. That's Martin's second bone crushing screen. Missed the long two. Quarterman tapped the rebound, but it's going to belong to West Virginia. We're under two minutes, and the Mountaineers trying to get to the lead again. One of the things to keep an eye on, LSU's handled the pressure and played fast. But as we get into the second half, watch for fatigue about the 10 minute mark. Well, that was a total air ball by State. Very surprising. Surprising to the Mountaineers, the best offensive rebounding team in the country, got it back. Good look there. And then Laura. Thank you. Macon will go to the line. That is our seventh lead change. Quarterman late on the rotation. You see the baseline drive, the help. But nobody helped the help, or Quarterman was late. Got caught reaching in, making three to hand one opportunity. It's going to be two on Quarterman, so he will come out of the game. Making it the free throw line with one. Still shot. no Jordan Mickey sighting, and it appears with a minute 28 to go that he'll have only played not even two full minutes before he ran into foul trouble and the bench. One of the dangerous things in playing against a team that pressures like West Virginia is their ability to make runs. Unless she's got to be careful that they're going to the half, down seven or eight. Gray getting bumped by Phillip all the way, goes behind the back on the dribble. Martin, he'll just drive it. It'll be rejected. Brown is fouled. Macon came up with a big block. LSU a little sped up at the end. Martin drives into traffic. With a big block by Macon. Gary Brown ends up with a foul on the other end, and exactly what we were just talking about after that last free throw. Got to be careful of the big run by West Virginia at the end of the half. One more for Gary Brown. You see that RMP? Elijah Macon lost his mom just days ago. His mother, Renai, passed away. And the player's wearing that in her honor, her initials are in Young man still struggling with this, of course, really hasn't talked about it publicly. And I can hopefully this is his peacetime, his time to focus on just the game. And away from a, a tragedy in his family. Long three goes over the top with a minute and six to go to belong to West Virginia. Certainly our thoughts to Elijah and his family over the loss of his mom. Tomorrow night, three top 15 teams headline the SEC Big 12 doubleheader. Freshman phenom Miles Turner, Texas against Kentucky. Then Billy Donovan's reloaded Gators and Bill Self's number 11 Jayhawks look for a statement. The SEC Big 12 challenge tomorrow night beginning at 7 Eastern on ESPN, the home court of College Hoops. Three ball, short, make it with another offensive rebound for West Virginia. And a fresh clock, we've got about 13 seconds between shot and game. Watch for Jawan State get in the paint on this possession or a post touch for Holton or Macon down on the block. Okay, for everybody catch their breath just a little bit, now State will go. Eight to shoot. Good show there by Odo. Now they go back underneath to Macon with four. Oh, he got blocked by Martin on the helm. And dribbled off the foot of Gray. A hit ahead to make it, and he'll draw the foul. That's pretty much all Odo could do, other than give up an easy shot, was the foul. 
That was a huge play, Dave. LSU's got a chance to go the other way and cut it to two or one. Maybe be the last possession of the half. Instead, a transition turnover leads to free throws for West Virginia. Now they're going to get a chance to score and set that pressure again with nine seconds left and maybe force another turnover or at worst, a bad shot by LSU. Make it a so-so free throw shooter, about 54% coming into the game tonight, missing that one. Transition turnovers always lead to something negative on the other end. LSU has led for most of the both, and that was barely. And a whistle and a foul. Oh, man. That is not going to set well with that man right there one. at all. No, his first, his first team foul number 10. Yeah, that says, you know, sometimes you don't even have to say anything. Sometimes just that look. I know you've done it. That look. It says Martin you messed up. Every, every coach has LSU. the look. Two shots. Fortunately, you have not given that to me yet, but I know one day it's going to happen. And you're going to get another one. I'm going to get one more. 7.2 to go, so West Virginia now subbing a little Jason offense Page into the game. Phillip will come out. Page will come in, a very good three-point shooter. Carter will come in, and Brown will go out. Seven seconds, a lot of time. LSU's got to get back at the ball stop and watch for the second shot with somebody flying to the rim for West Virginia. LSU, LSU takes a timeout. Time It'll be a 30-second timeout while they settle their defense up. You see Martin on the night, 13 points, 7 of 9 from the foul line. But again, the Wendy's Wooden Award candidate, Jordan Mickey, not even two full minutes of action before he was set down with two fouls. They lost the All-SEC freshman, the All-SEC defensive player, and he's already blocked 14 this year. And he had 106 blocks last year. So if you're Johnny Jones and you're going into halftime and, and keep this thing at three, and you've played without Jordan Meekie basically the whole first half, right. you've got to be pleased with them. There's Mickey right there, barely enough time to even break a sweat. LSU's in their huddle right now. One of the things they're saying is do not foul, especially, especially a jump shooter. Keep the basketball in front, force a challenge jump shot, and make sure that you box out if West Virginia shoots quickly. This is the best offensive rebounding team in college basketball. Don't let them get a quick tip in at the buzzer. By the way, to be fair, Devin Williams from West Virginia, similar situation as Jordan Mickey. He only played a couple of more minutes, and then he got hit with a second foul, and he too has been out of the game. So Bob Huggins probably has that same thing. Hey, I've missed my big guy. And there's the foul. Now, that surprises both of us, I assume. Martin LSU gets in for the foul. Second. Two shot foul. So a really important player for you picks up a foul. You give West Virginia, not just West Virginia, West Virginia's best player, an opportunity to go to the foul line and with 4.4 seconds left, a chance for West Virginia to set their pressure and maybe steal and get another quick one if you're not careful. Bad middle error. That's real Martin on that one. West Virginia doing work at the foul line. And now that's two fouls on Martin. So now you're going to start the half with Mickey and Martin with two fouls. And that mistake leads to two points. And there is the pressure Darren talked about. Two seconds. Gray. Well, he had a chance at that, you know? He had a chance at that. West Virginia, 43. LSU did not make a bucket in the final two minutes and 34 seconds of the half. A 9-1 run for Bob Huggins' Mountaineers. And the pressure that we suspected could turn the game did indeed turn the last couple of minutes of the half. West Virginia is up 43-38. Let's send you to Anish Shroff in the studio. Anish, SEC Big 12 Challenge presented to you by Sonic. It's part of Jimmy V Week for Cancer Research on ESPN as we continue our commitment to the V Foundation and Jim Balmano's dream to defeat cancer. In Morgantown, West Virginia taking the lead on LSU, 43-38. Again, that West Virginia defense has lived up to its potential. With Darren Horn, I'm Dave Lamont. Darren, this game started out, fast break speed, good flow to it. It got choppy. Why? Well, the biggest difference was that combined 21 
turnovers and 31 free throw attempts, Dave. It just led to a lot of breaks in the action. This team, not this game, not played very cleanly by either team. It's been great effort, but the turnovers have been the key. And if you watch West Virginia, it's, it's not a lot of trapping and rotating. It's just man up and a lot of active hands. You can't be sloppy with the basketball. You got to protect it, unless you didn't, and it led to a lot of turnovers that resulted in points for West Virginia in a game where they only shoot 34% in the first half. Getting to the foul line and making 15 and getting 14 points off turnovers has them a four point lead. And LSU without Jordan Mickey, only two minutes and two fouls in the first half. So right in front of us, Daxter Miles Jr. will inbound for the Mountaineers in the home white and we're underway in the second half of this battle part of the SEC Big 12 Challenge. And we get more of those games tonight. Got a great one following ours. Arkansas and Iowa State. Williams on the move. Almost drew another foul, but that would have been on Odo, a West Virginia offensive rebound. And they'll get two off of that mistake. And the largest lead for the Mountaineers is seven. We may see a quick timeout here. Staten will go left-handed. Looking over at Johnny Jones, who's off the bench. West Virginia doing what they do best to start the half, an offensive putback and basically a point off turnovers. Josh Gray over penetrating. I'm not sure what Martin was trying to do there. We've got a West Virginia player shaken up on the play, and it's State that must have got hit in the face and is trying to shake it off while dribbling. And it's not going to happen. He's going to have to need some attention. We've already had blood drawn tonight once. So he may have been hurt or stunned, I should say. Let's take a look at what happened. Watch number three here. Tony Godo got it by accident. Number 31. Battling for the loose ball. Gary raked him across the face. Well, she's had two possessions so far. And they've been sped up by West Virginia's pressure. We've got to slow down. Don't drive the ball into two or three people and force a shot. If you've got an easy one, take it. If not, pull it out and run some offense. Gary Brown, number 14, has it now in for State, who's sitting in Bob Huggins' seat. <laughs> so that tells me he'll be back soon. Williams misses the hook, and the rebound fought for by two LSU players before Martin comes away with it. Let's see if LSU tries to get Jordan Mickey, who sat most of the first half going, by getting him a touch inside or in the elbow area here early. Josh Gray, who had an interesting first half. He had five assists, but didn't score. And Martin, there's another turnover forced by West Virginia. State due to come back in. Jackson, Jackson Gray. First time we've had a double-digit lead for either team tonight. Another steal by West Virginia. And a layup. Timeout LSU. We've had an 18 to 1 run over the first and second halves. West Virginia doing what they do best, creating turnovers and turning it into points. Uh, it's party time in Morgantown at the beginning of this half. Darren, what was the one thing when LSU had to avoid? It's happening right now. The big run, we talked about it at the end of the half, and then again to start the half, and LSU's let it happen in large part because they haven't taken care of the basketball. West Virginia is so dangerous with this pressure and taking turnovers and turning them into points. Martin over to Jordan Mickey, who makes the spin move. Good defense. Mickey comes up short. Quarterman is back into the game. Missed the follow-up. And quickly, State into the front court. That's Miles. Beautiful look, and the shot was missed by Holt. That was a fabulous pass, but going to the floor, caught a timeout. West Virginia will get it back. West Virginia. Yes, you should have had that basketball. Hornsby did not pick it up. You can't dribble a loose ball, Dave. You've got to pick it up and chin the ball or dive on it. If you try to dribble it in traffic, Somebody else is going to come up with it. I love when they tell football players just fall on the fumble, you know, particularly when it's on an uneven surface like a grass surface where you get unpredictable bounces. Just get it. And it's the same principle. It's been five minutes since LSU has had a field goal, and Darren Horn will take us inside the play. When you're attacking West Virginia's pressure, one of the things you have to do is stay out of the corners. If you get in the corners, you're going to be in trouble. 
When that happens, you see the low catch there. Freeze it. If you get in this area against full court pressure, you're in trouble because not only are you playing against two defenders, you're playing against the baseline and the sideline. Takes away your vision. Gray actually never even really caught that ball cleanly, but you never want to go that low against full court pressure and try to receive the ball in the corner. So a really critical stretch here for LSU. Uh, a little bit of a block shot that time picked up by Jordan Mickey. That's what he does so well. A hit ahead to Gray. Gray to Hornsby. Back to Gray. He'll take an open three. Gray. And finally on the board, Josh Gray. The junior from Lake Charles, Louisiana. Now West Virginia gets a little sloppy and turns it over. So take a, a moment to remember that basket might be the basket that restarts LSU offensively. Well, it was a good offensive possession. Gray came down, could have forced one in transition one-on-one -on -one against State and didn't do it. And then is the recipient of a nice pass in the corner by Hornsby for the open three. Let's see if it settles LSU down again. I think they've got to go through Jordan Mickey as much as possible. They need to get their All-SEC player involved in the offense. And it hardly seems like he's been here. He played two minutes in the first half because of foul trouble. He's back out there now and awaiting a pass, and it's turned over instead. Another turnover captured by the Mountaineers' defense. Holt turns around for State and almost had it intercepted by Hornsby. And State will direct everybody where he wants them. Good one on one on one defense by Hornsby. Stop the dribble penetration by State. And LSU playing aggressively. Holt back to State. They've got 10 to shoot. Hornsby doing a great job. We're down to five to shoot. Carter on a tough drive. He'll pass to Williams. Got to shoot it. He'll draw a foul with two to shoot. One of the things you're always concerned about as a coach, you see Jordan Mickey. When you have a good player like that, pick up early fouls, have to sit a whole half. Is he going to get back in rhythm? Now he's picked up his third. Johnny Jones has to make a decision. Does he play him until he gets his fourth or sit him again? I, I think you let him play. You can need him on the floor. You're on the road. Down 12 now after the free throw. See if you can't get him involved in the offense and get him going. LSU does substitute, but they take out Josh Gray and bring in Jalen Patterson. So you are going to let Mickey play. And I support the idea only because he just didn't play much in the first half. Well, there's going to come a point in the season later on where he's going to have to play with foul trouble and they're going to need him to. Hornsby pulls up, misses, rebound, West Virginia. Get ahead to Holt. Always goes through state. Beautiful look back to Holt. McCorderman anticipated it and steals it for LSU. He lost the handle. Somehow got it over the shoulder to Patterson, who lost it out of bounds, and it'll belong to West Virginia. That's the 20th LSU turnover. A lot of the turnovers that are being forced by West Virginia, again, are not trapping and rotating and shooting gaps. They're just speeding LSU up, forcing them into bad passes like the one we just saw from Corderman. That's a really tough pass to handle in traffic. Drop it out of bounds at West Virginia Bowl. Bob Huggins wants the players to spread out a little bit, and they do. Now some teams that play fast and press have to be playing fast and pressing to do well. West Virginia didn't execute well there, but They've got the ability because of State to run offense, create off the bounce, and throw it inside to guys like Devin Williams and Jonathan Holt. Quarterman in double figures off the bench. He averages almost 11 points coming off the bench. He's exceeded that tonight, and he's keeping LSU active. Plus, he has four rebounds. Well, there was a foul, and they got away with it. Miles got grabbed by the waist, and the officials let it go, and he gets the layup. Patterson, good bounce pass, wide open. Mark. Don't know if he needed to do all of that, but he got it anyway. Could have gone straight up on both sides and dumped that one. But again, the pressure has created the fear of, is there somebody coming after my shot? Nice finish on the other side. Didn't need to. 15 and 11 for Martin tonight. Seven of those coming from the foul line. Carter. Yeah, and out. Rebound LSU. And the 12th rebound for Martin. Portman. And that's going to be a blocking foul call. Let's see who this is going to be on. The crowd irate at Joe DeRosa.
uh, the foul is going to go against West Virginia, and it's going to be on Jonathan Holt. West Virginia finals call number one, Jonathan Holt. The Jawan State's Mountaineers in control of this game thanks to their remarkable defense. Log on to jimmyb.org or call 1-800-4-JIMMY-B to donate. Dave Lamont, Darren Horn, courtside here in Morgantown. The SEC Big 12 Challenge for the Big 12 up. One game to none. And up in this game, Quarterman missed the first and two. Tim Quarterman, a sophomore from Savannah, Georgia, has played magnificently off the bench for Johnny Jones and has had to because of early foul trouble. You've got on the floor right now the outstanding Wendy's Wooden candidate Jordan Mickey, number 25 for LSU in foul trouble. He has no points Darren and three fouls. This is dangerous territory. We talked about West Virginia's ability to make runs and the run they went on to end the half and start the half in the first half and start the second half. They've got to be careful down nine that another one of those 8-0 runs doesn't put this game out of reach. The lead was 13 at one point for the Mountaineers. So a little bit of a run by LSU on their own. Tough shot on the runner and a foul. On the elbow is with Joe DeRosa. He's number 15, Jalen Patterson. That'll be on Jalen Patterson, his second. second. Team foul. Dexter Miles, Jr. at the line. Dexter Miles, Jr., the freshman from Baltimore. 71% free throw shooter. Played at Notre Dame Prep last season. That's in Massachusetts, however. I imagine there are probably other Notre Dame preps around the country. This one can always associate Notre Dame with South Bend. Also got several alum from the Montverde Academy in Orlando. That remarkable basketball program there. Including Jalen Patterson, who had that foul committed against him. Williams missing off of the offensive rebound, and LSU will come back the other way. In fact, Devin Williams is one of them, the man with the goggles on the ball right now. LSU at their best day when they play through Mickey and Martin on the interior. Tapped up by Mickey, no good. Williams fighting for the rebound, and here's a critical foul call because that's going to be the third foul on Jarrell Martin. So now both of the ace big men for Johnny Jones have three fouls. Number one, Jarrell Martin, his third team foul, number three. And Johnny Jones, you can just hear him thinking from here, what do I want to do? And at the moment, the answer is I'm just going to be mounted. Well, you got to ride him at this point right now. You need to sit down in the half court and get some stops offensively, play through both of those bigs, get something going to the basket. State. Tough little shot, missed, rebound, batted about. Hornsby comes away with it for the Bayou Bengals. Patterson, sweet little shot there. And the lead is very quietly down to seven. Challenge against West Virginia is you can play terrific half-court defense, but you have to finish possessions and keep them off the glass and not let them get second-chance points. See the run that LSU is on. It's been mostly West Virginia runs. It's about the middle of the first half, but LSU's on one now. Staten. Corner three. No good. Missed by Carter. Rebound Mickey. Patterson running off the wing. Missed everything that time. Williams gets the rebound. Billy D. Williams getting his first action of the season for West Virginia. If I'm, a, if I'm a wing player playing for West Virginia, I love playing with Jawan State. I'm just going to spot <laughs> over in the corner, all right, slot into the slot when needed. He can get in the paint crate for you anytime he wants. Over four assists per game. Devin Williams, he too, a quiet game because of early foul trouble. We're down to six to shoot. Staten, there he is creating. Long three ball rimmed out. Quarterman with another rebound for LSU. Saw a gap, tough shot, got it to go. It's a 12-3 LSU run. And 7-0 in the last couple of minutes. Give LSU credit. West Virginia goes on the big run early, gets up 13. LSU just keeps battling back. Bob Huggins going for some mass subs here. Five he had, guys. Yeah, I was going to say, they might as well have had the hockey boards over here and blown the whistle for the line shift because he was going to put in five more players, five different players, I should read to try to stop the bleeding. 
Well, we talked about this earlier. I'm just stunned that this is happening so soon. Sunday, the selection committee's final rankings are revealed. Find out who's in the college football playoff selection show presented by AT&T. Sunday afternoon at 12.30 Eastern on ESPN and watch ESPN. That's the conference championship games this week, and most notably the Big 12 not having a conference championship game. And how will that impact things? I think ultimately it's going to hurt them long term. You see Tim Quarterman there, and he's been outstanding tonight, Dave. And one of the things that you have to do as a team when you're growing is figure out a way to play well and find a way to win, maybe when your best aren't at their best. And tonight, without Jordan Mickey really being available for the whole first half, Tim Cordeman has stepped up, 16 points on efficient shooting, has grabbed six rebounds, and LSU still in this game without yep. their star player really giving them anything statistically. That's a good sign for LSU this, as this team continues to get better under Johnny Jones. So a completely different five for Bob Huggins. Now, we have another timeout coming. So this gives him a chance to rest those guys a little bit in addition to putting some fresh legs and maybe sending a little message that he wasn't terribly happy. Nine to shoot. Adrian. And he's not going to be really happy with that either. The steal by Hornsby. There's Quarterman one more time. It's down to a three-point West Virginia lead. 18 for Quarterman. LSU getting it done with half-court defense and getting out and getting easy transition baskets, especially Quarterman, his third one in three trips. There you see the run. That's basically West Virginia basketball being played against the Mountaineers. Brown, nice little spin move. Foul line jumper, no. Adrian fought for the rebound, and Mickey clears out everybody, and here's Quarterman again. Grown man rebound by Mickey. Yeah, that was. Oh, look out. That's a tough fall. On the drive was Martin. But LSU is starting to play like the Mountaineers, Darren. And they're getting it done with defense. Hornsby with a nice steal and flip. And Quarterman has been good in the second half. Has his Tigers within three. Timeout. Three and a half minutes without any points at all. Tim, give me a quarter, man. He's played more like $50. And he's done it in transition. Really attacking the glass. Stepped up in the presence of Jordan Mickey. Been good defensively and really has finished well at the rim in traffic, whether it's the half court or in transition, as we saw there. All the way to a career high, 18 points, Dave. Martin hits the first of two. Look at this thing. We, we're sitting here talking about West Virginia starting to pull away with their 15 steals and six block shots. But all of a sudden, LSU has cut this from 13 and to two. So where does West Virginia go for offense? They need to go inside, get Holt in the touch on the interior, throw it into Macon, play some inside-out basketball. Looks like they're trying to do that, setting Macon up on the post, being guarded by Mickey. Mickey's a great defensive player. And right on cue, but there's a foul. This is a critical call right here. LSU foul up on the number 55, Tim Quarterman. It's on Quarterman. His third. Now that's his third. Foul. So you've got Mickey, Martin, oh, Quarterman, all with three. And Johnny Jones is going to ride with the guys that have played his best tonight. So Quarterman staying out there also. Quarterman reaching in to pick up that foul in a situation where Macon's spinning out of control and you got the best shot blocker in the one SEC, one of the best in college basketball, who moved it after Elijah Macon shot it, but Quarterman had already committed the foul. Now, can Jordan Mickey get going offensively? That's the area where he's still missing out. He's got to get an energy play, Dave. He's got to pick up an offensive rebound, a tip dunk, something in transition, get himself going with an energy play. He's taking one shot, ball out of bounds of along to LSU. Taking one shot, he has three rebounds and three fouls and a turnover in about 12 minutes of play. And yet, LSU's within three. This is what LSU worked on this afternoon. They successfully break the press, barely, but successfully nonetheless. <laughs> well, there you go. That pretty much sums up. If you're just sitting down to this game, this sums up what you've missed. Mickey for three. I don't think that's the energy play you were referring to. Not the one. If it goes down, great, <laughs> but not shooting it at a real high percentage right now. 25. Needs to make sure he gets inside. The player's rationale on that, Davis. But, Coach, I can make it. 
I was and open. The coach's rationale is you're open for a reason and you're not making it. <laughs> Touch foul going to go against Patterson. I think that's going to be three on him. It is. Number 50. And Quarterman. Tim Quarterman. No, they're going to call it Quarterman. That's four on Quarterman. That's two foul number five. I thought that was on Patterson based on his reaction, but that's on Quarterman. And he has head down a little bit as he walked back to the bench. It's five team fouls against LSU. So Patterson will stay in. Josh Gray back in the game. Other players had a quiet offensive game. One for five shooting. And seven turnovers. He guards State. Well, State left him behind there. But good defense by Patterson. An easy shot missed. Tapped up. No good. And it's going to be another big man rebound by Mickey ahead to Hornsby. There's a lid for West Virginia on that thing right now. Patterson. A little early. Oh, it's a little early in the shot clock, perhaps, there, Darren, huh? Well, it, it is if you're Jalen Robinson and you've got Jarrell Martin and Jordan Mickey on your team. Play through your two bigs right now in a game that's becoming a grinded-out game. West Virginia will do that to you. Over Mickey, and Mickey gets the rebound. Quick dribble and ahead to Hornsby. This time, Patterson will give it up. Hornsby, now he can hit that. We're tied. Hornsby. The 13-point deficit overcome by LSU on the road. Well, Johnny Jones told us today at practice, Hornsby can make shots. We need to, we just need him to get one to go down to get his confidence up. He makes a second tonight. The largest lead of the Mountaineers at one point was actually 14. And we are sixth time. LSU really growing up tonight in a tie game on the road against a good West Virginia team. Playing with Jordan Mickey's got foul trouble. Now Porterman's got foul trouble. Where do you go? You go to your best guy. You go to Jawan State, who only had three on the shot clock when that shot went in. Well, there's 17 a, for him. And there's a reason he's a Wendy's Wooden Award candidate. Reigning MVP of the Puerto Rico tip-off. Orange being an aggressive drive, and he's fouled. I think that'll be on Tariq Phillip. Number 12. And it is. is for the so Hornsby Number showing that he's more than a three-point gunner. Very aggressively three. going to the hole. Line for LSU. Hornsby. Two shots. Hornsby, 73% foul shooter. Played at UNC Asheville. And transferred, so he set out last season. Williams and, and lots of substitutions now for Bob Huggins. Devin Williams comes back into the game. Brown and Macon check out. And Dexter Miles Jr. is back in for West Virginia number four. There you go. 20 to 6 run now, counting that free throw. West Virginia appeared to have control, complete control by the way they were playing, forcing LSU into multiple mistakes, but the Tigers have settled down. Patterson, a little bump with Staten. No whistle. Staten going after it again. Williams and Mickey. There's your big man matchup, and Devin Williams, the sophomore, hits it. I think if you're LSU, you'll live with a challenge jump shot from Devin Williams. He can make that shot, but much better than them attacking you at the rim. That's going to be knocked out of bounds off of Gray, who can't believe that call, but West Virginia forces another turnover. They're the best offensive rebounding team. They lead the nation in steals, and they're second in turnovers forced, and they lead it home by two in the SEC Big 12 Challenge. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Sonics 399 Foot Long with Tots. Tom Calipari's Kentucky team is deep and talented, but number six, Texas, has a great freshman big man, Miles Turner, and he could be a matchup nightmare. The SEC Big 12 Challenge tomorrow night at 7 Eastern on ESPN, part of Journey to the Tourney, presented by Sonic. And with both the challenges this week, that's the game I've been looking most forward to. Obviously, Duke-Wisconsin last night, I think, was one that was greatly anticipated. But this Kentucky-Texas game, Texas has got the size and the length to go in and bang with Kentucky. They are playing without Isaiah Taylor on the road in Rupp Arena. But it's going to be interesting to see that matchup tomorrow night and how the physical play of Texas, if it can impact Kentucky, who's been just incredible so far. That's Kansas, who just finished winning the Orlando Classic, including beating Michigan State. 
and looked like Kansas, but Kentucky made them look like something else the other day. Holton with an offensive rebound for West Virginia. LSU never put a body on West Virginia. They just jump for the ball. You got to actually hit them, get to their legs so they can't jump, or they're going to hurt you on the offensive glass. There's a reason, Dave, they're the best offensive rebounding team in college basketball. That's the fourth foul on Jarrell Martin. 16 points, 13 rebounds, and now four fouls. Leave him in. Take him out. Leave him in. Sixth team foul against the Tigers. Nobody coming off the bench here for LSU, so they, Johnny Jones agrees with you. Phillip is the first. I mean, it's either him or Quarterman. Who do you want to play with four? Yeah, that's a good point. And you need the size right now, Martin. And still no points for Jordan Mickey. 0 for 2 from the field. See the foul trouble for LSU. Martin and Gray under seven minutes remaining in this game. Patterson in the contact there and the skip pass. Gray had to run it down with seven to shoot. Gray on the drive. Tough turn. Got it. This kid's a terrific finisher at the rim. You can see why he averaged 34 a game in junior college. Just he's got the ability to get in the paint, take some contact, stay focused on the rim and finish. That was a nice one. Just five points for him tonight, averaging 12.7 a game. State went to the left hand, rejected. Hornsby comes back the other way. Patterson, free ball. Missed everything. Rebound to West Virginia. That's the second time he got a little anxious, maybe, on the uh, fast break. One of the important things as a player is knowing who you are. When you're Jalen Patterson on the floor with Jarrell Martin and Jordan Mickey, you need to find those guys first. Williams being guarded by Mickey. So he has six to shoot. Deep into the shot clock, it'll be up to Miles. Mickey just waiting on it and didn't go. Beautiful drive by Miles, and it's a four-point West Virginia lead. Mickey on the drive against Holton. Beautiful pass and missed by Martin. Well, that was a great-looking pass by Mickey. Devin Williams going to tie his shoe, and so Juwan Staten went back and said, okay. I'll wait for you. Meantime, Quarterman due to come back in for LSU. And that's a reach-in foul. Going to go against Gray. Good call by West Virginia to take advantage of the matchup. Tariq Phillip, a much bigger guard on Josh Gray. If you're Josh Gray and you get caught in the post like that, Dave, you can't stay behind. You got to get in front. If you do stay behind, don't reach. You're going to get called every time. And that's what happened. Now it's a one on one situation. Patterson will come out of the game. So Quarterman comes in. So you've got two Tigers on the floor with four fouls. And Jarrell Martin and Tim Quarterman. Calmly sinking the front of the one on one. The sophomore from Brooklyn with an 81.5% free throw shooter. And LSU. He raced a 14-point deficit. West Virginia has built it back up to five, pending this free throw. It is now six. How important has Tim Quarterman been tonight, who's over on the bench? He's been out for four minutes and 51 seconds. LSU, only one point during that time. Good pass. And Mickey gets his first basket of the night at the 4.59 mark of the game. So Will that you, get him going? So if I told you before the game that Mickey's going to get his first basket with 4.50 left in the game, and it would be a two-possession game, would you believe me? No, I would not. The guy averages almost 18 a game, 17 and a half coming in. And 10 rebounds. Picks up a steal there, though. Knocked it over to Gray. Gray sees the middle open. Nice pass to Martin. And it was deflected by Holton. Great job by Holton. Hit ahead to Williams. Hornsby went after him, and he missed it. Rebound to Mickey. Quarterman will lead the break into traffic. And 
we've got all sorts of problems here. Joe DeRosa. Connie Jones is talking with Joe DeRosa about that. DeRosa giving him the stare down. We're still waiting to see the call. Right, they called Daxter Miles Jr. for the foul. So what would Johnny Jones be mad about here, Darren? What do you think it is? I think he thought it was an intentional shove by West Virginia. He was way out on the floor. And you, you know what? You want to see that from, from your coach. Sure. He, he thinks his player gets a cheap shot. All right, whether he's right about it or not, he's fighting for his guys. That's what you want if you're a player. That's what you want if you're a fan. You want a guy that's going to fight for your kids and your program. Johnny Jones is doing that in a game that's important for his team in the non-conference and two-possession game. No, and actually Joe DeRosa looking around, he, he, looked, he looked over at Roger Ayers, his, one of his officiating partners tonight, and Roger shook his head and said, no, nothing. So just getting some confirmation. Now, Johnny Jones still going at it, but not in a, in a disrespectful way. It's just a, at this point in discussion, he knows he's not getting the call, but he's just trying to get his point across. It'll be LSU with the out-of-bounds underneath the basket. Both teams with two timeouts remaining, 422 left in the game. Don't forget, I know you're enjoying this game. We have another one. We've both seen Arkansas in person. They're meeting the mayor tonight in Ames. And that will be something. That's going to be a very entertaining game. Two teams that are high octane offensively. Arkansas, of course, with the great pressure defense. Something like we're seeing tonight from West Virginia. And Arkansas plays with an attitude. Definitely have an edge. Mike Anderson's best team since he's been at Arkansas, no question. 22nd turnover by LSU tonight. Yeah, that's going to be a great game immediately following ours, so stick around for that. Darren and I will sprint out of here and try to find a TV for that one ourselves. Tapped out, controlled by Quarterman. Good pass by Quarterman. Martin had it stolen away. Staten got it over on the steal. Left hand layup. Follow by Tariq Phillips. Quarterman, wow, a three to cut the lead in half. He has been huge tonight for LSU. Knocking down threes, finishing in transition, career high, 21 points. That was gutsy because if that doesn't go and the Mountaineers come back the other way, who knows? Good cut that time there. And a steal. It's going to be a kickball, a kickball by Quarterman. So it will be West Virginia with 15 on the shot clock. We're headed towards a great finish in this one, Dave. It's players making plays. West Virginia with the tip dunk. And then Tim Quarterman not to be denied. Gosh, this kid's having a great night. Drains a huge shot for LSU. He's got his Tigers within three. Teams headline the SEC Big 12 doubleheader. You got Texas and Kentucky. Number six versus number one. Billy Donovan brings his Gators against Bill South Jayhawks. That's a nice one. Kansas ranked number 11. They just won the Orlando Classic. And the SEC Big 12 Challenge continues tomorrow night, beginning at 7 Eastern on your home court of College Hoops ESPN. And, of course, we got a nice one here, too, as part of that same challenge. See your score in time. And very little time to shoot. Remember, West Virginia only had 15 on the reset. And they lose it. Their 12th turnover. And we have whistles and a timeout called by LSU. They have one remaining. And they wanted to get this man back in, Jarrell Martin. And he's had a good night statistically. Well, and with good reason, 16 points, 13 boards, three assists. He's gotten to the foul line 11 times. And all of this in a game when Jordan Mickey has not given him much because of foul trouble. He's been outstanding. His sixth double-double in eight games. Doing a little bit of everything for this LSU team. He's terrific on the glass. He can finish at the basket. Really is best when he's playing 15 feet and in. That young man's a matchup problem. Does a lot for this LSU team and the kind of guy you want in these situations, Dave, because he can make a play with his athleticism. You can throw it to him on the block and give it to him in the elbow area, or as we just saw in the highlights, he can just go make a play maybe on the offensive glass. You just don't want him shooting three-pointers. 
would prefer not with him making one on the year out of now 20 attempts. Almost a 60% shooter when he shoots from two. So Johnny Jones has one timeout remaining. Bob Huggins has two. See the field goals. West Virginia actually doing worse in that department, but they have a huge edge of the foul line. 21 to 14. And they have 24 points off turnovers. Their average is 26. That's Mickey. Spin move. Holton fell down. Mickey gets the easy deuce. It's a big time move for a 6'10 player. On the bounce, change directions, be able to gather himself and still make the play at the basket. Easy to see why there's 21 NBA scouts here to watch this game tonight. Coming up at the two-minute mark, State. That's a three-ball hold. Rim no good. Williams gets the rebound for West Virginia and a fresh shot clock. And that's where the Mountaineers want the ball. And Bob Huggins wants a timeout. Timeout from West Virginia. Well, this is what LSU has missed all night tonight, Darren, the offensive ability of Jordan Mickey. Well, Jordan Mickey, first with the little ball screen, he steps back and then able to make the play off the bounce. It's a big-time spin and finish. Holton loses his feet and gets knocked to the floor and gives him the clear lane to the basket. Averaging almost 18 a game, only four tonight, Dave, and yet his LSU team within one inside two minutes. <laughs> He's only taken four shots and has made two. If you're just joining us, Mickey was out of the game within a minute and a half with foul trouble, did not play the rest of the second half, now has still foul trouble, of course, playing with three, but has played better and has finally gotten his feet under him in this game, but it seemed like it took forever. Well, defensively, LSU's been pretty solid in the second half, in the half court. One of the keys is you see the foul totals there. They've got to defend without fouling for some perimeter jump shots by West Virginia. And then the big thing when you play West Virginia, it's not the first shot that'll beat you, Dave. Yeah. It's the second shot. You've got to put a body, and it's got to be five guys rebounding. Josh Gray, get down inside. Tim Corderman, get down inside. Everybody on LSU's got to gang rebound the basketball defensively here in the last two minutes. The officials have gone to the monitor, two of them. And we're not 100 we have to be honest. We really don't know what they're looking for. Now, the other thing for West Virginia in their favor is they only have four fouls against them. So they've got a couple if they feel the need to use. And we're going to get uh, Kip Kissinger to come over to talk to Darren. Darren, what did he tell you? Taking a look at a little extracurricular activity on that last play. Wanted to see if there oh. was a okay. little contact, a little activity. I think the officials like playing with the new system that's in place <laughs> where they get to go to the monitor and yeah. watch it frame by frame themselves now, NFL style. They're not having to use our monitors anymore. So we don't have what they're looking at at the moment, and we're waiting to see what the call is, if there's a call at all. Be sure Johnny Jones is in his huddle talking about the importance of keeping Staten in front, blocking out, and then coming down offensively and knowing exactly how you want to attack this West Virginia defense. I think it's got to be with the ball in Josh Gray's hands and playing through Jordan Mickey and Jarrell Martin. No quick jump shots from anybody for LSU. And looks like Roger Ayers and Joe DeRosa have decided and we may get an explanation. We may again get one of the officials to come over to explain what happened. It's nothing is what happened. <laughs> this will be, thanks to Kip Kissinger who just said nothing. It was a long time for nothing. I'm, I've always been in favor, and I like replay in football. I like it in basketball, but I think there should be a time limit. I really do. If you cannot make a determination by X number of like two minutes, minute and a half, then there is no call. If it's that hard to see, then it didn't happen. Right. You know, we always in football, we always talk about indisputable video evidence, and it's the same thing here. So here we go with a one-point lead. The Mountaineers have the ball. You see what's coming up next, a sweetheart of a game in Ames. 
Williams, spin move, Mickey against Mickey. What a nice shot by Williams. Outstanding post move by Williams over one of the best shot blockers in college basketball. Going to the line will be Miles, and there is the other problem. You give up baskets, and then you give the ball up because of this relentless pressure. Well, but we drew it earlier on the Telestrator, Dave. You cannot enter the basketball to the corner against this West Virginia pressure. LSU tried to do it again, it resulted in a turnover. The 24th. And Jonathan Holton got the deflection talking to Hugs earlier today. Talked about how important he is at the front of that press. It's one of the reasons their pressure is so good. They got an outstanding big setting the tone on the inbound. Miles wow, normally fairly reliable. 71% free throw shooter. That first one was ugly. The second one was pretty. 25 West Virginia points off turnovers. They average 26.3. If you'd like to see the beginning of the Arkansas-Iowa State game, ESPN News has that. We will switch our audience to that game as soon as we finish this one here. Hornsby, foul line J. Tapped up and good. I think that was Jarrell Martin. Great execution. Wide open 12-foot jump shot. They moved the defense enough that it opened up offensive rebounding lanes for two great offensive rebounders. There you see in the one Big 12 minute, SEC minute, Challenge. The Big 12 is up 2-0 as Baylor has defeated Vanderbilt and Nashville. We're under a minute here. This is exactly what you want if you're both these teams in a game like this. A chance to test yourself. You got to get buckets when you need them. You got to get stops when you need them. That's what they're going to need come conference play. So they go to Juwan State. Guarded by Gray. Seven to shoot. State floater. Tough shot. Rebound. Taken by Gray. Simple play, Josh Gray. Simple play. For the lead, Hornsby. Got it! Hornsby. That was simple. Timeout, and the last Virginia, what a money ball. We're watching this LSU team grow up right before our eyes. Josh Gray came in as a prolific scorer, learning to kind of distribute and still stay aggressive. Just makes the simple play. Hornsby, they've been waiting for him to get on track. Johnny Jones talked about that earlier today with us. I'd say he's on track tonight. His third three and none bigger. Then his last one that gives LSU a one-point lead. He's got 15 points, third leading score for LSU. West Virginia, 16th ranked at 7-0. And, oh. and LSU has the possession arrow. There's no more shot clock. 27.2 left in our game. And again, West Virginia does not have another timeout. LSU has one. One of the things you have to focus on if you're Johnny Jones in this timeout is talking about how are we going to defend the ball screen with Jawan State? And expect the basketball in his hands from West Virginia. You've got to guard that ball screen correctly. And then again, five guys gain rebounding against this. West Virginia is either going to put it in his hands or go right back inside to Devin Williams like we saw a few trips ago. Either way, it's not a stop, Dave, until they get the rebound. No, you're right. Against the top offensive rebounding team in the nation, 20.7 per game. Very good point. Then if they do get the rebound, be strong Whoa. with the basketball. Watch West Virginia slapping at it, and don't throw a quick pass just to get rid of it. You're better off getting fouled, even if it's a bad foul shooter. <laughs> you can go down, get a chance to make some, and set your defense again. Don't throw it away after you get the rebound. It'll be miles to inbound. Holton Williams State. And Page, don't forget Page can shoot. He doesn't have a timeout. He was going to call one, doesn't have it. And Martin commits a foul. And he's fouled yeah, out of the game. That's his fifth. Team foul, number nine. So your second leading scorer in the game is fouled out. LSU with good pressure. There's no timeout call. Jarrell Martin just a little over aggressive in that situation. The last thing he wanted to do was foul, but credit this young man. He, he's basically kept LSU in the game along with Tim Porterman and yep. Jordan Mickey being in foul trouble. So John Odo will come back after a long winner's nap. He's back into the game. Now at the line, you've got Jonathan Holton, a junior out of South Florida. A 64.3% free throw shooter Jonathan coming in. Has taken one tonight. 
Got to block out. Tapped up and good by West Virginia. They lead. And it's almost a steal. Hornsby got hit in the face. Hornsby clearly hit in the face by Jonathan Holt, not deliberately, as he reached back for the ball. And there's blood on the floor again tonight, second time. We saw this in the first half, Dave. This could end up being a flavor one. Yep. Free throws and, and the, the basketball back. You're right. Crucial in this situation. And the blood evidence, and it's there, it's right in front of us practically, is going to work against West Virginia here. The officials will separate them, send them back to their corner. So it's a free timeout for these two teams. We talked about if you get the rebound, first of all, they didn't block out. Nope. But then we also talked about be strong with the basketball. Don't just sling it. LSU lucky. And then on the flyby, the reach in, you know, we've had two possessions right here. And this is what happens in these early season games. Jonathan Holton with the reach in on the ball picks up the foul. You learn from these situations. Two silly fouls from LSU and now West Virginia that were unnecessary that are going to end up being crucial there. Now, the officials have gone on the monitor and they've come back very quickly. Let's see what the call is going to be. Let's see if we can get uh, one of them to come over and give us the information on what they're going to do, a flagrant one here or not. Meantime, they're cleaning the floor. Second time we've had to do this tonight to get blood off the floor. It's a non conference game. And these teams are going at it like they're rivals. They haven't played each other since 2005. Now, the other issue is with the blood, Hornsby, can he come back in? The officials are discussing that. Tim Kissinger and Roger Ayers are going over the return of Hornsby. Still waiting to find out if they're just calling this a regular foul, a flagrant, or what? because West Virginia has fouls to give. And no announcement has been made from the public address system either. So this is a critical decision from three veteran officials as to we're still waiting to see if there's free throws coming, which there will be if it's a flagrant. We don't know about whether Hornsby's going to even be able to come back in the game or is this going to be a side out of bounds. We're going to get an explanation here from Kip Kissinger. So they're going to rule it a common foul. Kip Kissinger has come over to the table to tell us it's a common foul, not a flagrant. So it's going to be LSU ball, neither team with a timeout, and West Virginia can still give another foul if they need to at 23.5. So that's going to be really important because with only 23 seconds left, LSU's got to find a way to get a, a shot up. And I, I think a quick one, if you can, but West Virginia's got a foul to give. Let's see if they do it right away or if they let it burn a little clock. And, you know, the danger of that if you're a coach is how much clock and does everybody understand when and how to foul when you're giving that foul up. So Mickey will inbound in front of us. Most important thing though, Dave, get the basketball inbounds if you're LSU. Foul, but that's okay. No shot, no shot. That's the 16th foul against West Virginia. So there's your answer with 15.8 to go. Well executed by West Virginia. Team foul number six. Now some substitution. Gary Brown will come in for West Virginia, and they'll go a little smaller. They'll take Holton out of the game. Patterson is in the game for LSU. That seven and a half seconds could become pretty crucial. Because now LSU's got to get into it a little quicker and they got to allow enough time to get an offensive rebound attempt. Ten. Gray on the drive. Nobody blocked him. 7.4 to go. No timeouts remaining in the game. State. Missed it. Tapped up. No. And LSU escapes with a win. Your final score. West Virginia drops to the ranks of the undefeated. 
Josh Gray with a big time play when his team needed it. The Juco All-American, hard to guard off the bounce, one on one. There was no help. He got all the way to the rim for game winner for LSU. You're gonna see the isolation, isolation refuses the flat ball screen, gets all the way to the rack for the bucket and the dub. Williams was chasing him but couldn't catch him and didn't want to foul him. For a recap of tonight's game and information on all varsity. Surprising letdown, I must say, by a very good defensive team. And what a win for Johnny Jones and LSU to come in here in this building where it's so hard to win and beat a very good team. And the SEC gets their first in this SEC Big 12 Challenge. What a win for LSU. We say so long from Morgantown, West Virginia. Now it's time to go meet the mayor. Ames, Iowa, Arkansas, number 18 and number 20, Iowa State. Good night, everybody.